Hello and welcome to another video. I'm glad to have you all here. Um, today is going to be part one of a two-part uh, video series and uh, in part one here we're going to talk about drawing. Uh, some of the philosophies that I have around it and the uh, mechanics of how I draw uh, based on questions that I've had from you the viewer. Um, so what some of those questions have been to grid or not to grid uh, and that is the question. So yeah, uh, I've been having a lot of feedback lately about uh, people noticing that I don't use grids uh, or project my work. I just I just go in freehand and wondering what that's about and is there anything wrong with using grids or projectors? Um, and no, I, I don't think there is. So, so philosophically, I don't I don't believe that you can say that there's only one approach to art or there's only one legitimate way of creating a work of art. I think that's nonsense. Uh, uh, none of us are, are going to be exactly like others. I've met people that share my DNA and goals in terms of wanting to be organic to the process and be the best drawers we, we can be. But I've also met lots of other people whom I consider very good friends who are pound for pound better artists than I am uh, that don't like drawing at all, um, which flabbergasts me and I don't understand. I don't relate to that, but I don't have to relate to it or get it to respect it. Uh, I certainly don't have to judge it. So what I find is that that judgment that does come across from people is very damaging. It can really hurt your feelings and really close you down because it builds on the insecurities you we already have as artists. We all have them. And this took me years to figure out, but I used to give more weight to other people's opinions than I did to my own. So that's bizarre. Like, think about this for a sec. I am creating something. I'm creating a painting from the ground up. From It's co coming from my DNA. It's coming from my impulses, my passions, my inspirations. And I'm feeding all that stuff into this thing. And I'm thinking that you have a more informed opinion about that work than I do. Like, that's that's nonsensical. That's not That's not acceptable. And once I realized that, it was one of those epiphanal revelations. And once that hit me, I've, I've never feared... Uh, the judgment side of art since. Now, I don't want to be misunderstood here. I believe in feedback. I think feedback is crucial and very, very necessary. But the judgment that often accompanies it is not. It's not fun. It's not. It's rude and it's hurtful. And there's no place for it. Uh, feedback, good. Judgment, no. In fact, opinions are fine. Differing opinions in art, in my opinion, are crucial because I can love a painting with every fiber of my being, and you can hate it so much you want to strangle the life out of it. And I think that's amazing. That's what art, that's the greatest gift art gives us, is that power, that breadth of communication. It can touch every being on the earth because we all react to art emotionally and, and differently from one another, and that's power. And we ought not take that from art. We should not be taking that from art. That is, that's a crime in my opinion. And that's what judgment does. When, when I walk in and say, you're doing it wrong. There is no one approach to art. There's no one system to art. There can't be, that that's, doesn't even make sense. So follow your system. So the only questions I would have in terms of the philosophy of it is, is why are you doing what you're doing? Do you understand who you are? Do you understand your DNA? If you do, and you are a gritter, or a projector artist, big deal. You're doing your thing. Maybe you just are really into the paint uh, and, and the rest of it doesn't matter to you. As much as I might not get that, who cares if I get it? You do, <laughs> you do. So you do your thing. The, the difference in my mind is the self-assessment and the goal structure. So if in your self-assessment, for example, you say, you know what, I, I, I do wanna grow as a drawer. I, I do want that organic skill. And I recognize the grid's not helping me, but you know, I'm scared crapless of it because I don't think I'm going to be a good drawer. Well, guess what? You're not, actually. When you start off, nobody's a good drawer. I mean, Gretzky is a, is a fantastic athlete. Everybody would say that. I'm sure he had natural ability in the sense that he had natural coordination and foot speed, you know, hand-eye coordination, whatever. But that dude spent every day of his life building his hockey skills. That's why he was spectacular. His natural ability may have uh, inspired him. It may have given him the hunger 
to be a hockey player, but it was his discipline and his attempt to achieve that next goal that made him good. Drawing is the same. You earn it. It doesn't drop on you like a fully baked pie that you now get to eat and just carry on. You earn it. You challenge that fear and you go for it. So if you were a student or a friend or somebody that came to me and said, how do I grow as an artist? I have this, but I'm scared I'm not going to be any good. I was like, well, don't expect to be good. Uh, Expect to earn being good and you'll be fine because you will grow. The more you try and do it, the better you're going to get at it. And the more you get better at it, the more you try and get better at it, and the more you get better at it, and yada, yada, yada. So you get there, and you just get there. I'm not the drawer I want to be, but I'm getting there. So there we are. You know, that's the kind of question I would ask, and that's got nothing to do with judgment. And, And here's the reality of the grid, is that it's not going to help that goal. Like if your goal is to manually grow your skill as a drawer, that's not going to help you. It's going to help you understand composition and spatial relationships to a degree, but you're not going to be building the uh, connective tissue between your observational eye and your hand-eye coordination. That's got to be done by you. And so that's not a judgment. That's just an assessment of a fact, of of a reality. If, If that's a goal of yours, that's the way to do it. If that's a goal of yours and you're trying it that way, you're not going to get there. So you just need to understand who you are and what you're trying to achieve. And that would be the safest road for you. So if you're a person that ends up going, yeah, I have assessed myself and I don't like the drawing thing. That's not for me. I hope Doug doesn't uh, think that's crappy or that, uh, you know, that person over there thinks that, you know, who cares what we think? It's right for you. Just follow your impulses. Do You do you. I'll do me. And we'll all be fine. And hopefully we can just get along together and have a hell of a lot of fun because we're adding beauty to the world as artists. And that's really what matters. Now, mechanically speaking, um, turning from the philosophy to the mechanics of it now, it's all measuring angles at the end of the day. So I just take my brush and I extend my hand to my reference. In this case, it's going to be a cabin that we're going to be working on. So I'll find a roof line, an angle for the roof. And I'll just find that angle and then I'll pivot to the canvas and I'll make the mark. Simple. Come back, find another angle. Boom, there's the angle. Come back, put the mark on the canvas. Key is I gotta lock my elbow and then lock my wrist once I find that angle. So I have to be far enough away from my canvas that I can pivot smoothly. So that the smooth pivot allows me to keep that angle as tightly as I can. Now, the backside of that and the second point to this is that you are gonna make micro adjustments without even being aware you're doing it. So it's crucially important in my book to recheck your measurements perpetually. I mean, I'm checking all the whole time through the painting for two reasons. I'm worried about mistakes, number one, and I do usually find them and correct them. But also as you go from a gestural thing and a a more suggested angle to a more refined angle that joins another more refined angle, you're just tightening everything up. And as it tightens up, you have to make small little adjustments to make the drawing that much more correct. In fact, I heard a saying just the other day that really amuses the heck out of me, uh, measure once, cuss twice. Uh, (laughs) So if you measure lots, you won't cuss at all. So that's part one. Uh, Part two tomorrow is just gonna be uh, taking the linear block in that we established today and pushing it to the final execution of the painting, particularly focusing on uh, color temperatures to create the mood that I'm after. And by the way, I want to say thank you for engaging. Thank you for asking and also being vulnerable enough to share some of your concerns with me. Uh, I do want to do future videos that are sort of a morphing of this Q&A type thing. This isn't quite a Q&A, but it's, it's got that thing. I want to address viewers' concerns and questions specifically. So thanks for the engagement. It really means a lot to me. That's where the idea for this whole video came from. So my thanks to you guys. So if you enjoyed the videos, uh, hit me up with the like button. And if you're not already, please subscribe because that'll help me grow my channel. And I would appreciate that very much. And if you want to be notified of the next videos coming up, then hit the bell button as well. Stay safe. uh, Stay healthy. uh, Be kind to each other. uh, Throw judgment out the window where you can. And uh, let's just put miles on our brushes and our pencils and, uh, and just have fun together. And I'll see you in the next video. So uh, starting off here, that's the reference that we're going to be pulling from. And I'm just using my hand now, which is very roughly the size of the cabin itself, to find uh, where I want to place it. Because uh, just because I'm using a, a photographic reference doesn't mean I have to obey it. It's, it's not the boss. Um, so I'm just trying to emotionally 
uh, through my imagination and just trying to picture the painting, decide, do I want sky to be dominant? Uh, do I want the earth to be dominant? Which relationship do I want to have the closest association with the cabin? Uh, and right in this second here, I decided that I liked the uh, photo reference composition enough to go with it. But then I, I sort of defiantly decided to push the cabin uh, even a little closer to the top of the canvas just to see uh, how that would make me feel. Um, so uh, in this uh, instance, I'm putting a lot of little tick marks on the canvas, not really drawing a lot of structure lines. Um, and uh, I used to do a lot of uh, more serious mark making, uh, especially early on in my career when I was just really learning some of the mechanics of drawing. Um, but I'm so used to it now that I tend to do it uh, mentally. I think I'm sort of trying to be as efficient as I can. So when I'm by myself in the studio, I, I tend to just kind of do a lot of that measuring out of my my uh, visual observation and then just start making little quick marks and building the drawing immediately uh, without a lot of source uh, gritting or anything like that. And, uh, and so I'm going to do another uh, little segment coming up in just a few minutes where I actually uh, go into a much deeper dive and show you all those things. But here I wanted to point out that, that this line I'm doing right now is me correcting the drawing because I did decide I didn't like it being pushed up too high on the canvas. It kind of left the, the feeling that I had in my imagination or picturing the end of the painting. It, it made it feel um, odd, uh, kind of uh, oppressive in a weird way. So I, I'm lowering it by about three quarters of an inch to an inch. Um, so I'm just redrawing the whole thing uh, and dropping it. But I wanted to show you that process because I think it's important for you to see that it's that uh, you can you can play. As I say, the photo reference is not the boss of you, but neither is the painting. I think a lot of us think that that we're we're sort of at the mercy of the painting and the paint, but we're we're actually in charge. I mean, we're mechanically and practically the ones putting paint on the canvas. So, so we know that we're in charge in that regard, but I think emotionally we often don't think we are. Um, and we, uh, we sort of let ourselves get bossed around. Um, but if you experiment and have fun, uh, you can really flip the switch on that and, uh, and really show yourself that you are the one in charge. So we're gonna push into the, the other drawing now. Um, so here's the larger view of the reference. And I would put them side by side, the reference and the drawing, but I, I'm going to superimpose the drawing over this just because I want to be absolutely sure all the angles I'm creating make absolute sense. So we'll just fade that back for a minute. Uh, I want to be sure that all the, the drawing that I'm doing is very, very clear. So as we move forward, you just picture a blank canvas. So here's the cabin's location, right? But we don't know specifically where it is. So here's what, how I'm going to find it. I'm going to mark it into thirds, and because that left third hits the peak perfectly. Sometimes, most of the times, I just do a mental little vertical horizontal thing. I rarely mark it on the canvas, as I've said. I just do it in my mind. But in this case, the thirds work better because of that intersection with that roof peak. So we're going to build off of that. Um, and on either side of the third, I noticed, right up to the wall of the cabin, right about there, those are the same size. So as I build the drawing of this cabin, I can use that little bit of knowledge we just gained to confirm some of my drawing and, and some of the shapes that the cabin is going to take. So I start off in my mind with just a little triangle here. I gave myself this little shape and I'm just using again the brush to find these. So these aren't arbitrary marks and I get three anchor points out of it. So here's the triangle again. I'm just using it again, no, nothing arbitrary, but I need to find out where the wall, the roof lines, all these different things are. And these three uh, pivot points, the anchor points, are going to teach me that. So I'm going to start off with these two angles right here. That's, that's where I'm going to start. So that, that's why that peak anchor point up there is so important for me. So two other anchor points are going to help me right now off of those measurements. So I'm just going to measure off the peak again and then off of the ground one. And where they intersect, I get a very easy anchor point. Uh, so once I've got that anchor point in place, I can show myself the roof line. Just angle my brush and bang, there it is. But I need to know where that anchor point is. So I can measure off the roof angle again. So you're seeing how important that roof angle is. And there's another anchor point. So I'll just drop those two walls in there and just refine that. Now I've got that far anchor point there that I want to get. So I can use both of those and where they intersect to create it. That lets me drop in the roof. That'll give me a new anchor point. 
but I need to find out exactly where that is so I can use the new one we just found and where they intersect, I get that point. Now I can extend the roof. But again, I don't know where does the wall end? Where does it come in? So I can use that anchor point to find that intersection. So now I've added that one, I can drop that wall in. So now I've got more roof with another anchor point and I can find it with that angle or I can find it with that angle. So the more angles I, or anchor points I create, the more angles I can measure from. So in this case, I have two roof lines now intersecting and I need to find that little guy. So now I can use that angle or I can use that angle. So I find one angle to measure and I can use the other angle to confirm that measurement. And that, that wall intersects with that uh, anchor point and then the next anchor point is gonna intersect right there and that's gonna give me that wall. So now I need to find the horizon line so I can go back to my ground anchor point and just angle up, just use my brush to find that angle and boom, there's my, er, there's my horizon line. So I can drop that in and then I can start to extend the horizon line, I can add in clouds, I can do snow drifts, and all of these are just being built off of angles I'm making with that brush measurement. Um, now some of them are eventually gonna become curves and, and uh, that'll, they'll soften, but the initial shape is an angle. So let's get rid of the reference so you can see sort of the blank canvas appearance. That's the drawing we end up with. And they're just all with angles like this. Just putting an angle on there. And all of these anchor points that we've discovered now, and there's a lot of them now, they can all be measured against one another to help dial down the correctness of this shape. So I can add any amount of detail to this cabin that I want and just referencing those anchor points and where you need to make adjustments, absolutely make the adjustments. Don't ever trust that your drawing is 100% accurate like I said at the beginning of the video. Uh, it's a fool's game, you just don't want to do it. Um, so just keep measuring throughout the whole process right up until you sign the painting, basically. <laughs> I think this is sort of my policy. Uh, now, going back to the actual painting, you can see a correction right out of the gate here. Uh, Re-establishing that uh, angle coming off the roof line um, and sort of that little curve on the roof, um, refining that a bit, just showed me that the wall extends further than I thought it did. Uh, that brings that wall back a bit. Um, and here's a little picture of the finished painting as a bit of a teaser for tomorrow's video. So that's what the final painting will end up looking like. Uh, now getting back to this little drawing here, um, it, one of the things that I do to uh, erase a mistake like I'm doing right here is just push a darker value over the line that I thought was a mistake. Uh, another way is in a few minutes, I'm just going to take a cloth with a little bit of Gamsol on it to erase that old roof line that's still hovering up there because uh, I think it was about this point in the painting I started finding that pretty distracting and it was starting to annoy me. So I just grabbed my microfiber cloth and wipe it out. Uh, now you can see the cabinet so much more clearly, just the silhouette shape of it. You can just feel it a lot better. So I find it very helpful. Uh, those are just two quick ways of using um, your tools to correct the drawing and make things more refined. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this dialed down journey into uh, the mechanics of drawing. Um, and tomorrow, as I say, it's going to be uh, uh, finishing the painting, focusing on uh, the color and the values and temperatures of those colors to create the mood. So thanks very much for joining me. I hope you have a good day. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.